Hello, I'm Grady Johnson, group publisher of SC Biz News. In Greenville, we are GSA Business Report. In Columbia, we are the Columbia Regional Business Report. We also publish North Carolina Lawyers Weekly, South Carolina Lawyers Weekly, the Mecklenburg Times, and here in the Low Country, we are the Visual Infonomics Group and the Charleston Regional Business Journal. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to our 40 Under 40 celebration. This is our 23rd year celebrating young professionals. These individuals are shaping Charleston's vibrant present and guiding its promising future. They help make our community a better place and we look forward to honoring them today. This year's class of 40 Under 40 once again demonstrates the energy, dedication, and creativity that helps make Charleston a special place. This year's class includes CPAs, attorneys, entrepreneurs, educators, lawyers, engineers, and nonprofit leaders. While the winners differ in their backgrounds and job titles, they all have one thing in common, a desire to elevate the Charleston community through their work and community service. Many sit on boards for local charities and outreach programs, while many others volunteer for worthy causes. The talent, determination, and passion shown by the young members of our community is remarkable and inspiring. My co mc for this event is Mark Wright. He's the Director of Business Development for the Visual Infonomics Group. Visual Infonomics helps economic developers and not-for-profits build consensus and accelerate outcomes by taking complex data sets and turning them into easily understandable infographics. Mark, tell us a little bit about the judging process. Thanks, Grady. All of the winners were selected by a group of their peers, former 40 under 40 winners, because of their professional success and their commitment to serving others. Here's how the process works. The Business Journal began calling for nominations in January, directing our readers to go online to our website and nominate an overachiever. After the nomination phase closed in February, nominations were given to the judges who narrowed the field to only 40. The quality and quantity of the nominees this year was phenomenal. Please join me in thanking Alexandra Moore of Be A Mentor. Alex is a member of the 2019 class of 40 Under 40. Let's also thank Judge Cuthbert Langley of Blackboard, also a member of our 2019 class. And finally, thank you to John Nelson of Amedion. John is a member of the 2018 class of 40 Under 40. A special thanks to our judges this year for their time and effort in judging this year's nominations. An event like this wouldn't be possible if it weren't for our corporate sponsors. I'd like to recognize and thank our presenting sponsor, the College of Charleston School of Business One Year MBA, and our celebration sponsors, which include MUSC Hollings Cancer Center, Nexon Pruitt, Select Health, and Truist Bank. I also want to give a big shout out to our longtime event partner, PDA, in helping us with the ultimate pivot by expertly constructing this video studio here in North Charleston, which allows us to take all of our 2020 events virtual. I'm coming to you from set A, and Mark is using set B, and we've scheduled all our honorees to come in individually to create as safe an environment as possible. Good afternoon. On behalf of the College of Charleston Master of Business Administration Program, congratulations on your outstanding achievement. My name is Robert Dennis, and I am a recent graduate of the MBA program, joining you now from Fort Worth, Texas, where I serve as Vice President of Land at Blackburn Research. While joining you all through your computer screens for this event is certainly a new experience, I am thrilled to be here to celebrate these 40 individuals who have excelled in their respective fields. These recipients have not only accomplished extraordinary achievements in their careers, but also innovate solutions for the Charleston business community while maintaining a clear track record of meaningful community involvement. The fact that the individuals were nominated and ultimately selected is an indication of how truly valued they are. In today's environment, professional development skills are becoming increasingly more valuable. The College of Charleston MBA program enabled me to graduate not only with the necessary academic knowledge, but also the soft skills and grit that today's business leaders require. The College of Charleston MBA gave me a competitive edge that is needed now more than ever, and it can possibly do the same for you. If you're thinking about the next step in your career, I encourage you to head over to mba.cfc.edu to learn more about our program. With that, I would like to congratulate the award recipients whose passion, purpose, and perseverance continue to set a high bar for the rest of us. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the evening.
Our first honoree in the class of 2020 40 under 40 winners is Anthony Poole. Anthony, thanks for coming in. Anthony is the physician assistant who serves as the chief clinical and quality officer at Federer Healthcare Network. So going into medicine, um, folks growing up, they're like, we want to go into medicine until they get to college and science and math. Nope. <laughs> So what made you decide to, to stick it out and go into medicine? Yeah, uh, great question. So when I was at Clemson um, doing undergrad, I was focused on trying to go into dental school. Dental school or medical school, wasn't really sure, um, and went to a, an after-class session where someone from MUSC came down to speak. And before the lady from the dental school spoke, someone from the PA school talked about what PAs do, um, the fact that you know it's a master's degree, but when we're finished, you know we can see our own patients, write prescriptions. There's PAs who own their own practice. and. One of the selling points for me as a young 21 year, 20, 21 year old was the fact that we could change areas of medicine without going back through residency and, and everything. So um, for me, not really sure which area of medicine I want to do. And that's a big decision to make, you know, when you're, when you're young. So I said, oh, PA school is, it sounds awesome. And I came down, visited MUSC and got to talk to some PAs who loved what they do. And uh, yeah, there was no looking back. I knew it was what I wanted to do. And when you got to MUSC, was that was that the only place that you went to to decide, okay, after Clemson, I'm going there? Um, yeah, at the time, MUSC was the only program in the state. Um, okay. There were many around the country, but MUSC, you know, I had made some connections there and then talked to a few other PAs in the state who had gone there. So I uh, kind of put all my eggs in one basket, which wasn't necessarily a smart thing to do, but right. it, it worked out. It worked out well. Very good. And so when we're not writing prescriptions and seeing patients, what do you like to do after the office is over? Mm -hmm. Well, so outside of my clinical duties, I do a lot of administration work. Probably four days a week, I'm uh, the chief clinical and quality officer. So all of our clinical programs, um, a lot of the work we do for the migrant agricultural workers in the area, um, the homeless health clinics that we do. In the last three months of my, my life have been all surrounded running our COVID, mobile COVID testing sites. So we uh, have been setting up two to three days a week in the communities, um, working with DHEC and um, the county agencies, um, Charleston, Dorchester, and Berkeley to do drive-through testing sites. And so that's really consumed a lot of my, <laughs> my time lately. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks, Anthony. Anthony Poole, thanks for coming in. 40 under 40, winner in the 2020 year. Thank thanks. You. I'm here with our next winner, Stacy Bailey. She's the Chief Operations Officer at Reason One. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you, thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. So tell us a little bit about Reason One. We are a digital agency based here in Charleston and also in Toronto. Uh, given everything that's going on, we're now fully remote. Yes. Um, but we do web design and development for uh, companies and organizations all over the world, and we're, our focus is on uh, nonprofits and do-good businesses. And so we're really focused on trying to make the digital presence have the impact on those sorts of uh, organizations. Interesting. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Atlanta, but I came to college to Charleston and never left. Uh, one of those. One of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been a downtown resident since, I don't know, 2004 and um, have really enjoyed Charleston as a whole for all these years. Yeah, so um, uh, what's, what's sort of the proudest accomplishment in your life so far? Oh goodness, well, um, I'm gonna be stereotypical and I have uh, one kid at home and one on the way in just a few weeks, so we are uh, excited about that. So from a family standpoint, definitely proud of that. And then um, from, a, from a professional standpoint, uh, reason one was a merger between Blue Key, which was a company here, and so got to go through that process of the, the merging of the two companies, uh, cross-border, different teams, all of those kinds of complexities, and uh, navigating that and still being in business and, and <laughs> doing insane, well. Insane, right? <laughs> insane. Insane <laughs> yeah, has been a major yeah. accomplishment. Close us out with some advice for the next generation. Oh, goodness. Um, I would say that my advice is that everything is temporary, whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing, all things are temporary. If we can ride it out, you'll get to the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, Stacy Bailey, 2020 40 under 40 winner.
Our next honoree in the 2020 40 Under 40 winners is Kirby Teller. Kirby is the Senior Vice President at CBI Work Solutions. Kirby, congratulations. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. So how did one get involved with Work Solutions at CBI? So, um, so our company focuses on commercial interiors, workplace strategy, occupancy planning. We also do interior construction. Um, did not go to school for that. I majored in political science and moved to DC and went the lobbying route and then got into commercial real estate. Um, my wife and I decided we wanted to move south to Charleston and uh, a buddy of mine uh, pointed me in the direction of CBI Workplace Solutions and just really liked the company and the team and the culture and that's how I got started. So that was about five and a half years ago. So did you get to Charleston because of the job or did you just come to Charleston and then found the job? So I grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. Okay. Um, I've always had a, a place in my heart for Charleston, coming here with my parents growing up. And um, yeah, my wife and I just decided we wanted to be in Charleston after her uh, brother's wedding here. We said, you know what, that's the place we want to be and all of our families in the South. So it's good to be good to be back. Very good. And so at what point do you go, you know what? I'm not the quickest bunny on the soccer field, so I'm not going to pursue the <laughs> soccer thing anymore. It was it happened in grade school or yeah. after college, or how did that all come to? to Great play? question. Thanks for bringing up old wounds. <laughs> um, no, I you know I enjoyed playing soccer in college. Um, it got me to, to Davidson and and loved it there and uh, met a good group of friends and got a good education. But I didn't think that was what I would do for a uh, for a living. So, um, and you're right. I'm not I'm not the fastest. So. <laughs> And we still play soccer now? You know, I, I, I did, uh, I've got two young kids now, so uh, it makes it a little bit trickier. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've played in a couple leagues since moving to Charleston, so good. it's good to get back out there. Kirby, thanks again for coming in. Kirby Teller, 40 under 40 winner this year in 2020 category. Thanks again. I'm here with Karima Calhoun. She's the senior process analyst, analyst with Boeing. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you. So what does a senior process analyst do? So one of the things that um, one of my primary responsibilities is the demand management process. And that is uh, pretty much evaluating the demands of the business. And um, one neat thing that I love to do is to look for opportunities to save money across IT. So I support the demand management process. So that's where that process analyst piece comes from and specifically looking for where we can, you know, look at demand a little bit better, um, understand it, prioritize it. And if there's, you know, anywhere that we could, um, you know, influence it in terms of optimization opportunities to save money, that's where I come in. Got it, got it. So you've you've accomplished so much so quickly. What what kind of what kind of stands out? What, what what's the proudest thing? I think the proudest thing is just being in a field that I was a little bit you know scared of growing up. Like I didn't STEM um, in a rural area is you know pretty much hey doctors and you know we didn't really know a lot about engineering. We didn't have a lot of STEM outreach um, where I grew up. So going off to college and, of course, uh, moving to Charleston and entering the workforce, that's when I started, you know, embracing STEM a little bit more. And like, you know what, I think this is a field that I want to get into. Yeah. You know, that's a long way from journalism and mass communications. Right. That was um, going to be even another though, question. How in the world <laughs> did you get there? Right. You know, I, I love my communication roots. I love the fact that I can write. And honestly, what, what got me into the IT field is... Um, a particular job before Boeing, um, they needed someone who could write well, but who could also understand technical lingo. Oh. So I could um, pretty much take technical requirements and um, translate it into everyday langu language. And that's what I did. Uh, where'd you grow up? So I grew up in Calhoun Falls, South Carolina. Okay. That's in the upstate, um, you know, really, it's in Abbeville County, um, close to Greenwood, Anderson, mm -hmm. um, Greenville. Just kind of depends on you know how familiar you are with South Carolina. Yeah, pretty pretty familiar. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, just to kind of close this out a little bit, uh, what advice do you have for the next generation? Um, the advice that I have for um, the next generation is, you know, I, I'm really big on planning. Um, so you know, make your plan, but also be flexible. Because I I tell you, I 
had no idea that my career would be where it is now. I never knew that I would be in the STEM field, but you know, networking. Um, so uh, within my plan, I, I found out from you know mentors that I needed to work in. You know that piece of networking and kind of expanding my um, you know my mentors and being receptive to advice. So I think um, you know having an adequate plan. Um, being flexible is important, um, networking uh, for sure, adding that into the mix, and you know, just being open to uh, the possibility of new opportunities. So ladies and gentlemen, 40 under 40 winner, Karima Calhoun. Next up is Deja Knight McMillan founder and CEO of Pearl Public Relations. Deja, thanks for coming in. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So how does one become a member of a presidential candidate's <laughs> campaign? You know, that really happened just by chance. I have a good friend, his name's Tyler Jones with Speak Strategic. And he knew that back in the day when I was in journalism that I was very involved with covering politics. I was always in Columbia at the State House, and then when I was in Tennessee, I was always in Nashville. Um, you know, at the Capitol there. So he gave me a call and said, this opportunity's come up, and what do you think about it? Would you be interested? And I jumped at the chance and was like, absolutely. So um, it was wonderful working with Senator Klobuchar. She was fantastic. Her team was fantastic. And it was really eye-opening just to see how a presidential campaign works. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. And were you based here doing it all, or were you on the road with the team the whole time? I was based here. So I was her communications advisor for the state of South Carolina. Okay. So I was setting up interviews for her, you know, all over the state, which was really cool. Um, and then also, you know, we had the debate here at the Gilliard Center. So, um, you know, helped with the after party there, you know, just shuffling media around, making sure they could get some time to talk with her. And it was, it was a lot of fun, but it was, it was nice being based where I could go home at night and go to sleep right. and, you know. Right. right. I understand that. <laughs> So how did you become a, a board member for Be A Mentor? Uh, Be A Mentor is something that is really, really, really important to me. Um, I actually started out as a volunteer, I still am one, um, four years ago when I moved back here. And I've always been passionate about children and the way Be A Mentor works, I, I think that the way they have set it up is fantastic for anyone that would want to be involved. You sign up, you know, you go through your training, background check, you know, they pair you with a student they think that you know, you'd fit really well with either in elementary, middle school, or high school. So I chose high school. And uh, 30 minutes a week, you go, you have lunch with a student, and the relationship that you build with that student just in 30 minutes a week. I mean, you know, the student that I met four years ago, we just went to dinner last night, like she's home from college, and like, we're still really close. Um, so through that, you know, just through my advocating and mentoring for being a mentor, they asked me to join the board. And um, so I've been helping them with their public relations and their media stuff since then. Well, that's great. And that has to be so rewarding to watch kids that you've worked with become adults mm -hmm. to functioning in the society. That's great. Absolutely. Congratulations again. Thanks for coming in, Deja. Thank you. I'm here with Jeremy Bennett. He's the director of graduate programs, college transfer programs, and online programs for the Citadel Baker School of Business. Welcome, Jeremy, and congratulations. Yeah, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Good. So, uh, working for a college, you know, where did you go to college? What, what, give us your background. So, I went to the University of Georgia for okay. my undergraduate degrees, yep. and then I got a two masters and my PhD from Georgia State University. So, I was very Georgia-based prior to coming to South Carolina for the Citadel. Yeah, so how did, how, did you, uh, how did you decide to get into the education business? So during my master's degrees, everything prior to that, I was involved in the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I had a family, we um, started to want to stay together on the weekends more yeah. than we were before. Yeah. And so I tried to think about other things that I enjoyed doing. And one of those was research and uh, my undergrad sociology. So then I applied for the PhD program and everything just kept rolling after that. So. Going back to something that I loved also. So I'll always love hospitality, but it was the next step for me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what, you know, what, what do you think is, is just kind of casting forward 
Um, what do you think's what in store for you in the next kind of you know five year time horizon? What's the, what's that next goal? It's a big loaded question. So um, I guess we'll see what what the Citadel has to offer for me uh, mm -hmm. moving forward. We're currently uh, growing very quickly under my programs. We've had fifty percent to hundred percent enrollment growth. Um, so we we recently transitioned to online. So I have a a lot of online knowledge also to, to, to put out there. So we're we're doing very well, and I, I would like to see that potentially continue at the Citadel, but potentially somewhere else as I continue to hopefully push push this hybrid online modality, which has become more important recently yes. than it was when I started at the Citadel four years ago. Yeah, yeah. And so so what's the best advice you've ever been given along the way? I think, I think the best advice I've ever been given is to uh, be nice to everybody that you're, that you're dealing with whether that's a student, so I work with you know students and people in the business community everywhere. I try to give everybody my undivided attention and be courteous to them and and respond quickly. So um, we're we're all about customer service and response times from our from our advisors to our admissions officers to our faculty, uh, recognizing each person's an individual and uh, treating them like that. So I think that that goes out for me whether I'm coaching youth sports to uh, teaching a, an MBA class. Um, that's kind of one of my philosophies. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, 40 under 40 winner, Jeremy Bennett. Our next winner couldn't make our video deadline, so I'm here with a different wardrobe at a different set, but still committed to honoring Courtney Lewandowski. She's the Senior Director of Strategy and Advancement at South Carolina Aquarium. Transforming and improving people's lives is a major reason our next honoree went into her line of work. As the South Carolina Sen Aquarium Senior Director of Strategy and Advancement, she's found the perfect match of powerful skill set and a lifelong passion for cultural institutions and their ability to connect people through storytelling. From working with such institutions as the Lincoln Center to her present work with the aquarium, she bears witness and exemplifies the power of positively transforming lives every day. Please join us in recognizing the example and contribution of Courtney Lewandowski. Congratulations. I'm here with our next winner, <laughs> Megan Ramsey, Chief Financial Officer of the Low Country Land Trust. Uh, welcome and congratulations, Megan. Thank you. Thank you uh, for having me so, here. So, Chief Financial Officer, Low Country Land Trust, what came first? Or did you get the job at the Low Country Land, Land Trust and then sort of uh, become the Chief Financial Officer or your financial background? Um, well, when my boys, who are now um, 12 and 14, were going to school full time, I decided to go back and get my master's in accounting, um, went the opposite direction as my undergrad. Um, and so I started off working for nonprofits. I first worked at Habitat for Humanity at Berkeley County oh, yeah. as the finance manager, and then I moved on to the Citadel Foundation, um, where I was the director of um, Director of Accounting and Business yeah. Operations. Um, and then I moved on to Low Country Land Trust um, for a controller, director of finance type position. Um, and then we really worked on acclimating the organization, which is how I got into the CFO role. Yeah, yeah. But I found the land trust first. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, l looking at all the things you've done, what's, what's your proudest accomplishment? You know, when I was answering those questions, um, I had uh, had answers and reworked them, and I was editing them. And then we were in quarantine, and uh, you know, I felt like the bottom just fell out of the world yes. at that moment. And so I was like, you know what, this isn't. It, I, it felt too stuffy and disingenuous. So I just started <laughs> writing answers as if we were having a conversation. Yeah. But what the paper says, um, I talk about a purple card in fifth grade. And really what it was is, you know, one of those pivotal moments where you have a goal and you're working towards a greater goal, chipping away at it daily um, so that it's not as overwhelming. And along the way, you're building confidence and building up on successes for greater successes. 
in life. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so st staying on the goal theme, you know, cast forward a little bit. What's uh, what's next for Megan? You know, I'm I'm really invested in growing with the organization, Low Country Land Trust. Um, and when I started, we were kind of in this interim, you know, big, big little sort of position. Um, we had the mom and pop nonprofit feel, but we had gotten significant deals mm -hmm. um, that was that really propelled the organization. So now it's it's getting to that big level. Um, past the growing pains of it. And I really want to see where, where the organization can go. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you're, you're doing big things. It's a great organization. <laughs> and, and congratulations to 40 Under 40 winner, Megan Ramsey. Thank you. Up next is Chris Bonner, architect and firm principal at B Studio Architecture. Chris, thanks for coming in. Congratulations. Thanks for having me. So in, in reading some of the information about you, let's talk about the Legos. So growing up, were you Legos all the time? Mom, five more minutes, I'll be right down. And were you creating things? Or tell me about all that. You know, I think it's a lot about inspiration. You know, and Legos is one of those great tools that uh, kind of have limitless possibilities. Um, was it all the time? No, I was, a, I was actually very much an outdoor kid, you know, playing in the pool, playing in the sunshine. Um, but once inside, once, once there was something to play with, some kind of creative juices to flow, those, those, those Legos and those little tools were really instrumental kind of drawing me to that particular profession. So when you're doing your profession, does any of the Lego memories come back? As like, of course, of course. You know, it's, um, the tools are a little different. You know, the pieces are a little different as well. Um, but the ability to kind of put things together with a lot of different um, little size and shapes um, is it, really the heart of what an architect does. Um, and honestly, if I, could, if I could get hired to build amazing Lego things, I would do that as well, too. <laughs> <laughs> they have people like that. I know they have people. It's a, it's, it'd be an amazing profession. So tell me some of the, uh, the community service and volunteerism that you do outside of the architecture stuff. Sure. Well, I mean, obviously, um, uh, I'm the president-elect of AIA Charleston, which is a professional organism for, ar mm -hmm. for architects here in Charleston. Um, I've worked with um, a number of Habitat for Humanity, a lot of actual building-type um, charities, um, general work in the community, um, as well as Trident United Way. I've, I've sat on uh, a couple of their community um, resource boards as well to get an idea of kind of what they're doing and how, how we can help them kind of better reach all parts of our community. Some of the advice that you've gotten over the years, anything that, have, that has stuck with you? Well, I think, you know, um, our world is so busy and, and, and so crowded, it's really important, I think, um, the advice I've gotten is to kind of focus on the things that you can control, really kind of um, uh, be mindful of, of what you say and what you do, um, but the rest, the noise, the things that are really outside your control, I think it's, it's really important to, to maybe let that be noise, you know, don't let that um, really um, drive who you are and what you do, but really focus on what's important to you and, and, um, and what you can control. That's great. Thanks again for coming in. Congratulations, Chris. Thanks for having me. Our next winner is Caitlin Brewer. She's president and CEO of Darkness to Light, and she couldn't come into the studio, so she's remoting in. And uh, I'm here at our remote studio, so Caitlin, we're double remote. <laughs> so, Perfect. <laughs> so, uh, so tell us, where in the world is Wheaton College? Wheaton College is in Norton, Massachusetts, and uh, it's the top 50 liberal arts college in the United States. Aha. Uh -huh. So, so, so tell us, uh, how, how, did you, how did you come to, to be the this, this present CEO of Darkness of Light? Tell us, tell us a little bit about that sort of that path that got you there. Yeah, so I worked in African development for the better part of a decade. And I realized that even though I loved it so much, um, I was missing birthdays and I was missing anniversaries. And so I decided I wanted to come home and I worked for a veteran-oriented nonprofit for a year and was recruited uh, by one of the board members at Darkness to Light and quite frankly, uh, was quite confused. I had never heard of an organization. 
that focused on child sexual abuse uh, entirely. And I thought to myself, I have a bleeding heart. Every cause is the most important cause I've ever worked on. And um, if I didn't know about it, then that meant that there were probably millions of other people that didn't know that this was something we needed to pay attention to. And so I interviewed, told the board I had no idea as a professional fundraiser where I was going to find money for this, but figured I'd give it a shot. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful that you're, that you're here. It's great work. Uh, what's your advice for the next generation coming up behind you? I think one of the things that was the most successful um, in setting me up for my career was always being curious and saying yes. And I think understanding that people have different motivations. And so what gets you to the same destination isn't necessarily um, the same for everyone. And so if you can keep an open mind, and you can involve yourself in projects that aren't necessarily in your job description or um, that seem related to what you're doing, it uh, undoubtedly will send you in the direction of meeting people who will have a you know, profound influence on your life. That's wonderful. I'm here with your award. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our 40 under 40 winner for 2020, Caitlin Brewer. Our next honoree is Bailey Bensley, Director of Pre-Sales and Sales Enablement at Omatic. Bailey, thanks for coming in. Thank you for Congratulations. having me. Thank you. So your background is marine biology, mm -hmm. and now you uh, are an NPO advisor. Clear transition, isn't it? Totally. I mean, I'm reading this, I'm like, certainly. So how does that relate? Or or does it? It does. So it, it taught me, being in marine biology, I, I taught shark ecology to kids. It taught me how to listen. Um, I was ready to teach on my first day, knew everything about sharks, and a little kid said, do they have tongues? And I said, I don't, I don't actually know the answer to that. So I kind of took that, and I used that every day in my job to be able to really listen to nonprofits and understand what they're striving for. It also says that you swam with sharks, so we need to talk about that. Tell us yep. about that experience. Oh, it's wonderful. Sharks are amazing. Um, so I lived down in the Keys for a while, taught marine biology down there, and specifically shark ecology. So was able to go scuba diving and snorkeling with sharks. I also worked at um, an aquarium where I would be that person that was scuba diving in the aquarium with sharks. Yeah. That's cool. They're awesome. I bet. They're really cool. So tell us some of the things that you're doing in the community and some of the volunteer work that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I Something that's the most kind of current thing that's of interest to me, because I've done a lot of volunteer work with different nonprofits around the area, but right now what I'm looking to do is actually something with my daughter, and that is the Jane Goodall Roots and Shoots program. Um, okay. Jane Goodall Institute, she's amazing, she's wonderful, and Roots and Shoots is just kind of her offshoot where you can try to bring conservation and education into your own local community. So I'm working with my, my daughter and some of her friends to start some initiatives with that and hopefully give back to the Charleston area. That's excellent. Thanks again for coming in, Bailey. Thank you. So I'm here with uh, our next 40 under 40 winner, uh, uh, South Carolina State Representative and Attorney with Pepper Law Firm, Marvin Pendarvis. Welcome, Marvin. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. And congratulations. Thank you. So, uh, so what's it like being a South Carolina State Representative? Tell us it's about quite that. The, it's quite the experience. This is I got reelected in, in June, so congratulations. You know, I've, I've just completed my third year, going into my fourth year. Um, I've always enjoyed the um, the public service part of it, you know, that's that's the reason I got into it. And so I think uh, being able to represent my hometown, you know, I represent a large part of North Charleston where I was born and raised. Yeah. And so it, having the ability to, to work with constituents on issues that are important to them, but also issues that I grew up experiencing is, is really gratifying in a way. So I, I just enjoy the public service part of it. Yeah. And you've been pretty clear about wanting to run for mayor. Yeah, so talk, I, talk to y'all. Tell me, you know, yeah, tell us about that. Right, right. Well, it's it's something that that's been on my mind for some time. You know, I've, um, like I said, I, I got into 
public service because I wanted to give something meaningful back uh, to my city. Uh -huh. And I, I feel like I've been able to do that in the House of Representatives. And so, you know, I've always been one that, you know, don't believe in, in being in a specific office for a, a, a especially prolonged period uh -huh. of time. Yep. You know, I, I think that you do the work and then you move on and, and look and see where your services are needed elsewhere. And so, I think at, at the appropriate time, which will be the next election, that uh, North Charleston will be calling me back home. And, yeah. and so, you know, I want to see what I can do to really help my hometown really grow and, and, and take the next step in, into this um, next generation of people that are coming here. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Thank you, thank you. So you've done so many things to be proud of, but in your profile you said your proudest thing was being a father. Oh, talk, yeah. Talk, yeah, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's, it's unique in these, these times in our world, right? Having a child, you know, he was born on April 20th, right in the middle of a pandemic. In fact, when he was born, it was right when we still had those shutdown orders. Right, so and you so, got a new baby. You know? Yeah, oh, new yeah. baby. He's still, it'll be four months here soon. Yeah. And so it's, it's been a blessing. You know, he's been our pride and joy, uh, just getting a chance to watch him grow and develop. And so getting a chance to pour into him, that, that's been very important to me. And so I've always... Uh, admired the prospect of, of being able to be a father someday and so I'm just glad to have the opportunity you know I just want to give him so much of the things that I didn't have growing up because my, my father died at a young age when mm. I was young yeah. and so I didn't get a chance to develop the relationship with him like I would have wanted to so being able uh, to pour into my son and, and show him the things that I've done have him learn from my successes but also my mistakes and you know I'm just looking forward to it all so it's, it's a blessing it's you know, a responsibility that I don't take lightly, but yeah. one that I, I take with pride and joy. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our 40 under 40 winner, Marvin Pendarvis. Congratulations. Thank you. Next up, Abby Bunkley, Ambulatory Quality Manager at Roper St. Francis Healthcare. Abby, congratulations. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tell us what it is that you do day to day that affects the lives and the health care of folks in the low country. Absolutely. So I work with the clinicians of Roper St. Francis Healthcare to remove barriers uh, for various patient populations. So ultimately, we want to improve the lives of patients in our community. And so I look for ways to do just that. And remove barriers. Talk about how, how that works. Sure, so um, we make sure that when the patient comes in for their visit, that they're prepped and our clinical staffs are prepped to make sure that they get anything from their breast cancer screening to the colorectal cancer screening based on guidelines from the NQF. And so if we notice that there's a particular patient population or demographic that's falling behind versus the other patients, um, I will work with them to do a specific targeted marketing outreach to close the gaps of care for those patients. So in addition to helping those patients, tell us some of the other volunteer work or other things that you're doing in the community. So I'm very, very proud. For the past five years, I've worked and been a part of the leadership team with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Um, in that organization, um, I'm very passionate about it. As a cancer survivor myself, I know the impact that they make on patients and their families that are battling cancer. Um, what's just amazing with the work that they're doing, um, three years ago, we actually changed our mission statement and that curing cancer is in our blood. So we really do think that we're on the break of something pretty remarkable with the immunotherapies that are now available in the market for various clinical trials. We're crossing over numerous disease um, sites now. That's so, great. Yeah. So some of the advice that you've gotten over the years, anything you want to impart to the folks that are watching? Absolutely, and I think it's um, one of the major things that I've really kind of stuck with me over the years is to continue to be a better version of yourself. Um, you know, oftentimes people ask in five years, where do you want to be? And for me, it's I want to be a better, you know, it might not be a specific job title um, and that sort of thing, but to be a better version of myself and continue to work on that daily. That's great. Abby, thanks for coming in. Thank you. I'm here now with Courtney Thompson. She's the market president of Select Health of South Carolina. 
one of our 2020 40 under 40 winners. Welcome and congratulations, Thank Gordon. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. You're good. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Where'd you, where'd you grow up? Talk, sure. Talk about so that. I grew up in North Carolina, so I'm a Charlotte, Charlotte gal. Uh-huh. Um, and I moved to Charleston about 12 years ago. I initially worked at MUSC um, doing neuro nursing. Wow. And I uh, did that for a little bit and then quickly transitioned to Select Health. So I've been there ever since. I just had my 10 year celebration there. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah, very excited. So just in reading your profile and all the things you've done, what, you know, what's the, what's the best advice you've been given? What, what's Obviously work very hard, <laughs> dig in, uh, roll up your sleeves and, and, to, um, and to have a mentor. And so I've, I've really leaned into all of those pieces of advice, and it has certainly helped me along the way. That's great. And what, what, uh, uh, what has your mentor helped you with the most, do you think? I think really just thinking about things from a different perspective and changing your lens um, and also pushing you outside of your comfort zone. So there have been many occasions in my professional career where I've really had to intentionally push myself outside of my comfort zone. And it's never comfortable, obviously, but um, but it really has propelled me into different areas of my organization and mm. challenged me to do things that I traditionally wouldn't have expected to do. So, so speaking of mentoring, uh, what advice do you have for the generation coming up behind you? Uh, get a mentor uh -huh. um, and, and roll up your sleeves and not be above doing anything. And so whether it's setting up your own meetings and taking your own meeting notes to developing a strategy, I think it's really important as a leader to be willing to do whatever you're asking your teammates to do and your, your um, individuals reporting to you. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that has been one of the things that I would pass on to anyone else, you know, just really work hard and be willing to do whatever it takes. So ladies and gentlemen, Courtney Thompson, 2020 40 under 40 winner. Thank you. Our next honoree, Justin Cruz, Manager K-12 Solutions Engineering at Blackboard. Justin, congratulations. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, I read in your bio that you wanted to be uh, a, a toy tester, <laughs> a, a la Tom Hanks and Big. How does one try to become a toy tester, and how does one fail at that? <laughs> <laughs> I think you try by uh, playing with a lot of toys and uh, you know making up uh, scenarios with your toys and begging your parents for the latest and greatest toys and often being told no, but using your imagination, you know, and your creativity, I think is, uh, is how you would get a job like that. I didn't seriously pursue it, but I, I am able to use my imagination and creativity at Blackbaud and in my role today and working with uh, nonprofits. And so your volunteer work at, at Be A Mentor, tell us about that and, and, and any, um, any experiences that are more memorable than others? I mean, I've had, uh, such an incredible experience working with Be A Mentor. I've only um, been doing it for a year, but a good friend of mine and another nom uh, award winner, Towner McGill, um, turned me on to the organization. And um, uh, just meeting the folks at Be A Mentor and then actually meeting my mentee for the first time, you know, and trying to build that relationship and, um, and trying to get him to open up. He lost his dad uh, a couple of years ago and um, doesn't have a real male role model in his life. So trying to get him to open up a little bit more and um, playing games and you know getting him to get more comfortable talking to me and opening up about uh, what it's like to grow up you know, without a dad and what it's like uh, to, to, you know, he's got a single mom who provides for him and his, his brother and his sister. And um, for me, I feel like I get as much if not more out of the experience than him because it's helping me i have a young child uh two young children a son who's four and a daughter who's two and my mentee is nine years old and so seeing kind of what goes through the brain of a nine-year-old and what kind of things um keep him up at night and get him excited about uh about life um, are teaching me you know lessons to to be a better dad and to try and be there for my son i would say a specific experience um you know, the first time I met him, I was in the cafeteria and he was very quiet. I could hardly hear what he was saying. And um, I was able to get kind of a side table in a side room with him um, to start talking a little bit more. 
and um, I realized that he loved Pokemon, and I have a nephew who loves Pokemon. So the next time I met, I brought a couple of Pokemon cards, and um, that really got him to open up, and uh, and that kind of created, I think, the bridge for him to just be more comfortable with me and and share share more. And it's been tough with COVID, uh, not being able to see each other as much, and um, be a mentor does a fantastic job with e-mentoring. Um, but I have a good relationship with my mentee's mom, and uh, he actually lives not too far from me. So we've organized a couple of meetups outside, social distance. But that's just been um, such a boost for, for my morale during this time, and I think for his as well, just being able to see each other and share what's going on this, this summer and talking about school coming back up. So it's been tremendous. I look forward to continue um, volunteering there and supporting the organization. Oh, that's awesome. Justin, again, congratulations, and thanks for coming in. Thank you. 40 under 40 winner, Justin Cruz. Our next honoree is Leslie Firestone. She's an attorney with Moran Van Allen, and she couldn't be here today to join us. But Leslie brings passion and tenacity to her work, whether paid or volunteer. Please join us in honoring Leslie Firestone. In my legal career, I am most proud of the work I have done in a pro bono appellate case. It was a controversial criminal defense case in which a rule of evidence may have been improperly applied at trial. For nearly seven years, I worked on this case as part of the South Carolina Appellate Practice Program. I lost in the Court of Appeals, and at that point, my obligation to my client ended. However, I was not ready to give up. I decided to, to continue the fight and take the case to the highest court in our state and ultimately found myself presenting an oral argument to the South Carolina Supreme Court. It was a challenge to prepare the case and myself and I am proud that I was able to deliver my argument with conviction and composure. This ruling could have a large impact on many criminal cases going forward and there is the potential to change the law here. This is why I practice law. I choose to live in Charleston because it's a community where I feel like I have an impact. It's not like living in a big city where one is a very small, ineffective part of something overwhelmingly large. In Charleston, the things I do, the ideas I have, the way I engage seems to have meaning. Partly because of the size of the community, but more importantly, because of the people. We are stewards of this historic place and the residents take an active role in honoring that duty. Although people don't always agree on the direction the city is taking, at least we feel that we can be heard and have an impact. It is nice to be part of something meaningful. I'm here with our next winner, Sean Connor, who's a teacher at Charleston County School District and the owner of Toe in the Dough Food Truck. Uh, welcome and congratulations, Sean. Thank you so much. Thank you for having so, me. So I want you to tell us about the food truck. I, I don't want to know about the menu. I want to know about the truck. The truck. T tell, me, tell us about the truck itself. Does it run good? What, tell so me. we actually, it's a trailer because ah, we because the it? trucks are, are so old a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. So we opted to buy a trailer so that if the truck went down, we could just find another truck to pull the trailer. So. We ended up going with the trailer. It's got a nice Italian wood fire oven built off the back. Um, it definitely is not fun to work in August because it's about 1,100 degrees in that oven. <laughs> um, so I worked this weekend and lost about nine pounds. So that oh, was yeah. nice. I was able to yeah. go to the beach the next day, but it's, it's a cool little truck. Yeah. So yeah. reading in your profile, you went to the College of St. Rose. Where is that? So that's in upstate New York, Albany, New York. Um, it's an education uh, school, so highly focused on education. I played college baseball there, so I got a baseball scholarship to play there ah. um, and then get my degree in elementary education. Interesting. So, so, you know, talk a little bit about working with kids and being the school counselor. What, you know, what's the one th piece of advice you seem to be giving kids all the time? The biggest thing is the same thing that my cousin, who was my math teacher, uh, gave to me is just make good decisions. You know, I carry that throughout every aspect of my life and and that's one of the biggest things that i'm constantly telling kids like you guys know what a good decision and a bad decision is just make the good decision so i've, I've kind of used that as my mantra you know throughout everything in life really 
So ladies and gentlemen, our 40 under 40 winner, Sean Connor with Toe in the Dough Food Truck. Well, congratulations, Sean. Thank you so much. Our next honoree, Molly Waring, is the owner and partner of Ballyhoo and Company. Molly, congratulations. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. So tell me, uh, your education, undergrad, is? Yes. Um, I went to the University of South Carolina and okay. um, got my master's degree at the College of Charleston in public administration. Okay. And then how does that lead you to owning and partner for Ballyhoo? How does, how does that, give me that connection. Um, well, I was a history major, so I uh, okay. researched a lot and uh, learned how to, how to write. Um, Ballyhoo is a content development marketing agency, so um, that helps a lot in my current business. Uh, but my MPA at the College of Charleston, uh, I, it led me actually to work at the Charleston Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, it really started to understand public-private partnerships um, and has helped me a lot with my nonprofit work with Historic Charleston Foundation, the Gibbs Museum of Art, and um, Ashley Hall. Okay. And is that your, where your community service lies in those three entities? It does, yes. Okay. Currently. Right. Rewarding? It I'm has assuming. been. It has been. It's been uh, really rewarding. And as we've all uh, kind of pivoted, uh, to use a word that we, we were just talking about, it... Um, in, this, in the current environment, it's really been helpful to try to help these nonprofits uh, figure out a new direction. Any advice you would give to the next up-and-comers, the next owner of the next Ballyhoo? Um, uh, a great piece of advice that I heard from Chief Justice Toll was uh, leave the ladder down. So uh, I had a lot of people help me get where I am, and I really strive to help those that are up-and-coming um, and want to learn. Great. Thanks for coming in, Molly Thank Waring. You. I'm with our next 40 Under 40 winner, Kelsey Brewer, manager of public and community relations for the South Carolina Ports Authority. Welcome and congratulations, Kelsey. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up? So I grew up in Hanahan, so I'm a local, uh, born and raised. I moved to New York um, after college. I went to the University of South Carolina, got a degree in uh, broadcast journalism with a minor in sport and entertainment. Thought I wanted to be the next Aaron Andrews, uh -huh. and I quickly realized that was not cut out for me. So I kind of focused on news and producing when I worked at Fox News in New York for a little while. Uh, wanted to come back home. I'm a homebody. I like being near my family. Um, I was really looking forward to the opportunity to work for the port, and when I saw that that position was open, I jumped on it, and I've been there now for five years. That's great. So yeah. I read in your profile you went up in one of those giant cranes. Tell, yeah. tell me about that. I, had to, I just have to know. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have um, some 155-foot ship-to-shore cranes at the South Carolina Ports Authority. Uh, we're soon welcoming 169-foot cranes, oh, yeah. and those will be some of the tallest on the East Coast. Wow. Uh, going up in one of those cranes, it's kind of nerve-wracking. So the first time I went up, I was super excited, didn't really think about what it was going to be like when I got to the top of the crane. Um, got a little shaky in the knees, but it's such a sight to see, you know, the tallest, sh the tallest cranes and the biggest ships calling the East Coast coming to Charleston. Um, and it's really rewarding once you get up there to see exactly what it's like. So, so how do you get up there? Do you climb it or is it an elevator? So we have an elevator. Okay. So you walk up a set of stairs and then you take an elevator all the way to the top. Um, and it's really beautiful once you get up there. I bet it is. So, so what's the best advice you've ever been given? The best advice I've ever given, um, I've ever been given, is to be intentional, um, never stop learning and growing. So, I've really taken that um, in stride in the past couple of years. Um, social media, cell phones play such a big role in our day-to-day -day lives now. So, when I get into meetings, when I go home to my personal life, I really try to be intentional with what I'm doing in the moment. Um, it's so easy to get distracted, so I always try to be intentional. Um, and if someone asks me for help, someone asks me to come, you know, learn something new, I really take the opportunity to go with them and really listen to what they do because it helps me in my position in public and community relations to really get involved and know what the different departments do at the port so it can make me kind of better in my role. So our 
2020 40 under 40 winner from the South Carolina Ports Authority, Kelsey Brewer. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. Okay, next up, Grayson Doerr, Investment Finance Manager with SCRA. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Welcome. So uh, SCRA lends itself to economic development. Why is that one of your interests? Uh, well, really, uh, out of college, uh, I knew I wanted to dedicate my, my career as much as I could to the state of South Carolina. I, I grew up, my mother uh, dedicated her, her time for the state as well, and so um, really, we, we infuse capital uh, into the state uh, ecosystem, the innovation ecosystem, and so creating jobs, uh, attracting follow-on funding to the state. And it's just rewarding to see young entrepreneurs and old um, either relocating or trying to build a company from the ground up and uh, really um, doing it at home for me. So this is you know where I'm born and raised and uh, really find fulfillment doing that. So. Any one of those companies that, that you folks have funded that was just an unusual idea that really took off that you're like, wow, that's something? Yeah, I mean, yes, it's, it's usually the unusual ones. Uh, so we invest in primarily IT, life sciences, um, advanced materials. Uh, we've had a few that uh, come back where I think early on, I mean, we're we're very risk capital. So early, early stages, uh, really right there with friends and families. And so sometimes we don't see the benefit of that for 10 plus years. Sure. And so uh, you see some of the ideas come through that, um, that you would look, you know, today and say, uh, you know, it's 50-50 it's or probably 25, 75, whether it will actually work out or pan out. Um, so a lot of those that we're doing today, we won't know for, you know, a decade, really. And so we're starting to see some of those come back um, that, really you know the market grabs hold of that you otherwise wouldn't have thought so tell the folks that are watching this advice that they can carry on five ten years down the line um one of the things i've seen uh, I, I did a, a program a few a few years back with berkeley county uh, leadership berkeley and i uh, really got to sit in and kind of talk to some of the high school students at that age i myself don't have uh, kids um, in that that age range i have young kids um, but I really started to see a gap where youth today are not um, really looking outward to have face-to-face -face interactions. A lot of them are, from what I saw in this discussion, were looking for careers. I call it behind, you know, behind the scenes, whether in IT call center type work, uh, troubleshooting. So I'd always encourage them to really take hold of face-to-face -face interactions with individuals. Um, don't underestimate a handshake. I know that's hard in the environment we're living today, and so, but really just challenging them to to make those connections and, and provide that lasting relationship. So, which is so important and going forward. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Grayson Door, honoree in a forty under forty this year. Thanks. So I'm here with Anishi Scott. She's the computer scientist at the Naval Information Warfare Center. Welcome, Anisha, and Thank congratulations. Thank you. I'm so excited. So I'm in, I'm in awe of your, your job and your job title. What, what does a computer scientist do for fun? Well, we have lots of fun. So I um, am into anything pretty. So interior design is one of my hobbies. Um, I love to shop for the items and um, just make something old beautiful. Um, also, I love to travel. So anywhere, uh, a beach, you can find me. Um, if friends that want to pick up and go, um, my suitcase is always packed <laughs> by the door. <laughs> Where'd you grow up? Right here in Charleston, oh, South Carolina. Sure. So I graduated from Goose Creek High School. Go Gators, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so what was the best advice you've ever been given coming along? So, um, well, I've had so many uh, good things, but most recently, and um, of course it's applicable to IT in the 21st century, is Google. Google and YouTube is my friend. 
So anytime that I want to, if I don't know how to do something, don't just give up and say, oh, I don't know how to do it. Google it. Go on YouTube. There's plenty of videos on YouTube to show you exactly how to do something new. And so I am literally living by that lately. So um, any new thing with interior design or um, anything that I am just unsure of, I'll get on the Googler and look it up and do my research and apply the information. And I think knowledge is power. So with the examples um, as virtual mentors, you're able to kind of apply the information that you learn from some, somebody who's already done it and have experience. That's great. And ladies and gentlemen, our 40 under 40 winner, Anisha Scott. Next up, Dr. Madeline Lewis, Professor Diagnostic Radiology, Program Director, Radiology Residency at MUSC. Congratulations and welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay, so tell me what your title means. What do you do? So um, I work in academic medicine. I'm a radiologist. I focus on women's imaging. So I do a lot with breast cancer work, um, working in um, Pauling's Cancer Center most of the time, and then I also do some ultrasound as well. I do a lot of research. Um, most of my research is focused on breast cancer, early screening, trying to decrease healthcare disparities, particularly in South Carolina, a lot of, to do with our mobile mammography ban. And then I teach a lot as well. Okay. So a uh, big part of my job is bringing up the next generation of radiologists. Okay. And when you're doing research, does that, and this is going to be a dumb question, but does that stay here or is it for the cancer community to learn about? It's for everyone in medicine to learn from. Okay. So um, you, I publish in journals. I'm invited to give national lectures on uh, my research and my areas of expertise and um, I present my research at um, conferences as well. Very good. So tell us something of, of value that you've learned that you can pass along to the next generation? So I think um, someone told me a long time ago that when you're first starting out in your career, if a door opens, walk through it, even if it's something that you might not be very excited about at the moment. And that has served me very well. Um, I'm at a point now where I can say no sometimes, which is great. But um, early on, I walked through some doors, which led me to meet some people and created some networking opportunities, which have been in invaluable to me. Um, also, sometimes when you step outside of your comfort zone, that's when you really grow. And those can be very powerful moments. That's excellent. Thanks for coming in. And congratulations again, Dr. Madeline Lewis. Congratulations, Dr. Lewis. We admire you for your leadership, dedication, courage, compassion, and being a great mom. Woo! -hoo! Congratulations, Dr. Lewis. I'm one of your biggest fans. Congratulations, Madeline. You are such an amazing person. You are amazing at radiology, at being a mentor, a teacher, a program director for our residents, a leader in our community, and a friend. I'm so glad to call you a friend. This award is very much well deserved. Hey, Dr. Lewis, congratulations on your accomplishments. We miss your face. Congratulations, Dr. Lewis, from the NAC team. Cheers. Cheers. Congratulations. congratulations. Dr. Lewis, congratulations on 40 under 40. Congratulations, Dr. Lewis. Hi, Dr. Lewis, how are you? We all want to congratulate you on your award, 40 under 40. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dr. Lewis, very well deserved. Congratulations, Dr. Lewis, we're so proud of you. Congratulations, Dr. Lewis, I'm so proud of you. I'm here with our 40 Under 40 winner, Gary Jaffe, Director of Contracts and Business Development for Atlas Technologies. Welcome, Gary, and congratulations. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's an honor. Tell, uh, tell us a little bit about where you grew up. I grew up in uh, Mechanicsville, Virginia, which is a suburb of Richmond, and uh, it was a great place uh, to grow up, small town, 
Uh, and then when I was exploring universities, uh, I landed on the Citadel and, and came to Charleston and haven't left since. It's a wonderful place to be. So, so I read in your profile that you were involved uh, with uh, production of MRAPs, which is something that you used while you were deployed. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. That's, that's an interesting journey. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when I uh, commissioned uh, into the Air Force out of the Citadel, I, um, I ended up deploying to Afghanistan in support of OEF uh, on what's called a MIT team. And so uh, I was deployed with the Army. I went to Fort Riley, Kansas. and. Uh, and then uh, deployed out of, uh, out of there to Kabul. And I was convoying around Afghanistan, training the Afghan National Army on logistics and um, supporting them in that capacity. And then, you know, when my four years came to a close and I made captain, I decided that it was time for me to separate, to focus on family, and I had some other priorities uh, professionally. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was a nice transition to the defense contracting community uh, in Charleston, which is a, a wonderful community of people um, and um, I now work for Atlas Technologies, uh, supporting uh, the Navy uh, Coast Guard in multiple different capacities, primarily network integration and cybersecurity. But uh, that the, the ability to still support the mission is something that um, always resonates with me and is, is a priority for me. And you know, you've, you've done a lot of stuff up to this point. What, what advice do you have for the, the generation behind you? Yeah, uh, the big th biggest thing is you know. Uh, this, this country, like most, uh, is hungry for leadership, and, and we're producing those now at the Citadel, and many universities are producing those. But, um, you know, the, the two biggest leadership principles that I, I try to um, embody are uh, to be present, so to really be present in the conversation, try to understand people's viewpoints and, and sort of where they're coming from, and uh, lead by example. You know, so take all the different leadership lessons that you've had uh, throughout your life and, and the good and the bad experiences and try to try to be the leader that you would want to follow. And uh, I think if you can do that, you can really be successful in almost any capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, our 40 under 40 winner for 2020, Atlas Technologies, Gary Jaffe. My path to Charleston, South Carolina happened many, many years ago. I was born and raised in Columbia, South Carolina and visited Charleston when I was growing up. I've always loved the area, Southern hospitality, the historical sites, beaches, beautiful places, and delicious food. When my husband was stationed here in Charleston, South Carolina as an active duty in the United States Navy, we fell in love with the area so much that when he retired, we bought a home in Somerville, South Carolina, and thought it would be the perfect place to raise a family, and honestly, the rest is history. My proudest accomplishment is becoming a mama and being a mama to my sweet four-and-a-half-year-old twin daughters. Being a parent is certainly the most challenging, yet most rewarding experience and a true dream come true. Raising my daughters has taught me so much about life and what I hope for theirs. Being a role model, instilling knowledge and confidence, and molding my children into change-making strong women who recognize their ambitions and achieve their dreams is an incredible opportunity I certainly don't take for granted. Seeing life through their innocent eyes is a powerful motivation to live bravely, love boldly, and find joy in every circumstance. My advice for the next generation is this. Work hard. Don't take the easy way out the satisfaction you'll feel will be well worth the investment. Be a change agent for the things you're passionate about. Celebrate life's little feats and big milestones. Always be honest and genuine, have humility, and give grace to yourself and others. I'm here with Laura Zagby Dye. She's the Biomedical National Partnership Manager from the American Red Cross. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you. So everybody knows uh, what the Red Cross is and does, but what does the Biomedical National Partnership Manager do? Yeah, so I just transitioned into this role last fall. I've been with the Red Cross 16 years. Wow. Unbelievable. And my role now is to steward and grow our biomedical relationships with our top corporate partners those that have a national footprint and want to engage in our blood drive programming across a vast expanse. Got it. So, so where'd you grow up? Just, just Alexandria, to kind of, Virginia. No kidding. Yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. 
I grew up right outside DC. I was actually born in the city and was raised there and then came here to attend the College of Charleston. That's what brought me here. I fell in love and stayed. So uh, you know, you've done a lot of stuff. Uh, what's the proudest accomplishment? Wow. I think my work with the Red Cross, it's just so heartwarming and touching and the impact that the organization has on the patients we serve and the victims of disaster that we help. I learn something new every day there still after 16 years and just the thought of it like kind of gives me chills when I think about it. So uh, what's advice for the generation coming up behind you? Find something that you love outside of work and giving back. It's just awesome, like it makes you feel so good and there is a way that you can make a big impact with a small exertion of effort. It doesn't have to be a big deal or a lot of time or a struggle to give, it should be very easy. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Zagby Dye, 40 under 40 winner for 2020. Up next, Brent Duncan, Senior Manager of Advertising and Community Engagement at the South Carolina Aquarium. Brent, congratulations. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. So how did you end up at the aquarium? And, and tell me about all that. I, I feel like the stars kind of aligned, and it was just meant to be. Um, I had kind of done a tour of the Southeast since I graduated college and um, was in Columbia and happened to move down to Charleston. And um, the opportunity presented itself. And uh, everything related to the, the people and the mission just all seem to kind of direct me to, to this role. And so I've enjoyed, um, at this point, more than five years with the organization. Wow. And tell us a little bit about some of the things that you're doing community service-wise and out there um, hands-on. Yeah, so anything that's that's related to um, you know community partnerships or we have all types of different uh, organizations that want to partner with us uh, to raise money for our conservation efforts. That's kind of all something that uh, I oversee at the aquarium, and we're uh, we're fortunate that so many organizations are very like-minded and really care deeply about these communities that we're in. So, uh, again, everything just kind of aligns with the with our mission, and and certainly a, a passion that I have just to give back to our community and the environment. We all deeply care about Charleston and, and want to protect the natural resources that we have. Any uh, any advice that you've gotten over the years that has really stuck? Um, it, you know. It, one thing that stuck is uh, old boss of mine used to say, you know, um, f find your passion. Eventually, you know, good things will come your way. Um, I definitely believe in good vibes and just putting good energy out there. And um, you know, he has instilled in me from um, from my early time uh, working under him that um, you know there'll be good days and bad days, but certainly um, if your heart is in it and you're um, putting good energy out into the world, then expect good things to come back to you. So I firmly believe that. It's pretty good. Yeah. Thanks again for coming. Thank in. you so much. Brent Appreciate Duncan, it. 2020, 40 under 40 winner. I'm here with Alicia Floyd, the Leadership Next Senior Program Manager at Boeing. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you so much. So I read in your profile you've got a bunch of degrees. You've yes, got a sir. BA, a BS, an MBA, and more certificates than I can count. So <laughs> which one of those degrees is, is the most useful to you right now in your current position? Oh, wow, useful. That's a really great question. I pride myself on being a curious learner. You know, education is currency, so I always want to remain relevant, right? And I'd say most recently I finished at MIT, a leadership at all levels um, program. And it just really talked about being transformational and agile with disruptive technologies that are coming and that we're all gonna be working and living in a, a very new environment. So I'm really appreciative for that learning solution. Yeah, yeah, got it. And where did you go to college? So I went to a couple. I went to Erskine for Erskine. undergrad, Got and it. then I went to the Citadel for graduate school, and then okay. I've been continuing at MIT here more recently. Got it, got it. Um, what's the best advice you've ever received as you were coming up through through all these careers and, and degrees? Yeah, really great question. And when I reflect on all the different wide variety of mentors I've had, um, here recently I've been reminded to always assume good intent. 
You know, do I wake up each day loving people in their limits, appreciating their gifts? So I would say assume good intent, have corporate grace. That's really powerful. Mm -hmm. and, and all of the stuff you've done, what's, what's the one thing that stands out for you? Oh, definitely my leadership title as a mother. I mean, my children are my legacy, right? And they, I have to be doing something right because they have such kindness in their soul that I see demonstrated uh -huh. on a day-to-day. -day. Ladies and gentlemen, Alicia Floyd, 2020 40 Under 40 winner. Our next honoree is Michael Samuel, Commercial Portfolio Manager with Truist Bank. Michael, congratulations. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. So I'm reading your portfolio that uh, in high school you took a macroeconomics AP course. Yes. Why? I, Why? I was, a ma I, took, uh, I was in my school's engineering magnet program, actually, so I thought I was going to be an engineer at that point in my life. And AP economics was caught by our head soccer coach, a guy named Coach Wilcox, and I thought he was a great guy, and I signed up for the class. And I actually fell in love with the material. It was kind of interesting to um, – learn about you know, supply and demand and how kind of the money supply works. Um, so it was a great class and kind of was part of my interest in finance and economics. And I ended up sitting for the AP exam and passing and got to skip that class in college. And where did where'd you go to college? I went to Georgia State University in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I got a dual degree in business economics and risk management and insurance. Oh, wow. And how did you end up in Charleston? Um, so after graduating in December 2015, I joined the bank, at bb at the Times, leadership development program. So I moved to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, lived there for six months, really focusing on commercial credit underwriting and the kind of the, comp the company culture at the time. And in the bank, you know, the kind of, the, the gig is, you sign up for six months and you, you have no goals, no production goals, you just go and learn, but you still get your full-time salary. Um, but the, you know, at the end of it, they get to move you wherever you want. So actually in May of 2016, my boss walked to my office and said, hey, you're moving to Charleston, South Carolina in three weeks. And I was like, all right. And then I moved here. Never had never been in the city before. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah pretty good. Could have ended up in worse places. For sure. Yeah. So tell me about some of the community service and, and some of the volunteer work that you're doing here in the, in uh, the area. So currently I do a couple of things with, um, in the philanthropic space. So really working with um, Charles Tab for Humanity. Uh, some of the board directors there. I'm the current treasurer of it. It's really focusing on obviously getting more affordable housing built in the area um, for the low-income residents. Outside of that, I also work with United Way, both on the board of directors as well as I lead Young Leaders United, which is um, people 40 and under that are investing in the community, focusing on health, mental stability, education. Um, it's really been a great opportunity to work with United Way through those two capacities. And then also sit with uh, Charles Young Professionals on the steering committee. That's the local chamber of commerce um, here, focusing again on programming, professional development. Obviously, with COVID-19, it's a little bit different now, but still same mission and goals. And then lastly, I work with Charleston Regional Development Alliance on the Global Fluency Initiative. And that focuses really on making Charleston a more globally fluent area. So when we have international students or residents that come in, you know, having that additional language signage in the airports or making sure that citizens in Charleston recognize the global economic impact that having being a globally fluent city offers to the community. That's excellent. It's a lot. Yeah, stay busy. Right. Thanks for coming in. Again, congratulations, Michael, on the 2020 40 Under 40 winner. Thank you. This is Mark Latanzio, Market Executive for Truist Financial here in Charleston. Michael Samuel, on behalf of your 150 Truist teammates, I want to congratulate you on this recognition and thank you for what you do to inspire and build better lives and communities. I'm here with Kelly Glenn. She's Director of Leasing and Retail Operations for RMR Group. Congratulations, Kelly. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be part of the Charleston 40 Under 40. It means, means a lot to me. I've enjoyed my uh, career in Charleston and all the great relationships that I've made in the, in the wonderful town. So it's a great, great honor to speak with you today. Well, good. Well, since since you couldn't be here in the studio and you and you're remoting in, we we are. This is the ultimate in social distancing right here. That's right. So, so <laughs> what drew you to new ways of doing business virtually? Yeah. So 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 what drew you to commercial real estate? I got started in commercial real estate. Was fortunate and got going in it right after college. I got started at Coldwell Banker Commercial oh, yeah. here in Charleston. 
Um, and I always had a strong desire for real estate and in general business. Um, and just like a bunch of people strongly urged me to get into the commercial side versus the residential. And so really enjoyed once I got, got to learn the business that was in 2004, 2005. Um, and at the time the economy was doing very well, got started, got my feet in the water, then went through the downfall. Um, but realized I was like, I was learning so much and really liked the business. So I was able to stay, stay in it through the 2008 recession, um, keep going and have now create a very successful career with it. Okay, so I just have to ask you, what in the world is a blue hose? <laughs> That's right. The bl blue hose is the uh, mascot from Presbyterian College where, where I went to school and it is actually a, a, a Scotsman dressed up in a kilt and all. Some people know exactly who it is, but it's fun having the, the, the mystery of it all. There you but our, so, our, school, so, our school mascot, I always know if people are familiar with PC when they ask about the blue hose. There you go. So, so ladies and gentlemen, our, our 40 under 40 winner, Kelly Glenn. Congratulations, Kelly. And I have, I have your award here. And so if you're really nice to us, we'll, we'll mail it to you. Uh, oh, awesome. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Congratulations, uh, Kelly. At a distance with um, masks on and I'll be able to come and get it in person. There you go. Congratulations, Kelly. Thank you. Our next honoree is Hannah Gervais, Civil Engineer Navigation, Army Corps of Engineers, Charleston District. Hannah, congratulations. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. So um, reading your bio, you worked on the or, and or are working on the dredging for the, the, the harbor. I am. How does that work? Right. So there's, you know, larger and larger ships coming in to the port these days. And the Corps of Engineers is responsible for deepening the harbor after doing like a big study and everything. Right. So I'm one of the team of engineers and other professions that figure out how to deepen it. And so my role on the team is designing the plans and specifications for the construction contracts. Um, so figuring how much needs to get dredged and where it's going and how. And how did you come to this profession? Um, so I always wanted to be a civil engineer. My dad was a civil engineer. Um, he worked for the Navy. Now I work for the Army um, as a civil servant. And I always thought that was a really cool um, profession and just getting to work on really interesting projects and be part of public service. So I wanted to be a civil engineer. I thought I would be doing like buildings and bridges and roads, normal civil engineer stuff. Um, I ended up doing more soils and water. That's what I really ended up enjoying. And so I kind of just ended up in dredging. I didn't know what it was until I got a job, really. Right. Best advice you've ever gotten? Um, just to really work hard and um, be passionate about what you do. And that if you work hard and you really care, that um, you'll succeed. That's great. Well, congratulations again, Hannah, for coming in. And uh, Hannah Gervais, 40 under 40 winner. Thank you. Our next honoree is Towner McGill, Strategic Account Manager, Brentag Mid-South. Towner, thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you, for having me. Thank you very much. So how did you end up at the University of Georgia? Oh man, well, uh, growing up, I, I was a child in, in Greenville, South Carolina, actually, and generations of family uh, went to Furman University. I had already applied early decision there, and um, just on a whim, a uh, high school girlfriend was going up to Georgia for a campus tour on, the, uh, uh, on a day off of school, and I decided to join her and walked around the campus and just fell in love with it immediately. Couldn't tell my parents yet, but I decided at that point I had to go to Georgia and actually ended up becoming a campus tour guide as a result of that. Interesting. So tell us about some of the things that you're doing with your mentoring and, and other community service. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm, I'm on the board of uh, Be A Mentor and uh, also been an active volunteer mentor for four or five years now. Uh, work with a sixth grader uh, that goes to school here in Goose Creek and has gone to school in North Charleston. Um, great local organization that had over 330 
uh, adults mentoring youth here in the community last year. Um, also heavily involved with Arm in Arm, which is uh, South Carolinians for responsible gun ownership, trying to reduce gun violence in our communities here by um, doing things that would, you know, respect Second Amendment freedoms at the same time, uh, you know, just trying to educate people on how to handle firearms safely. Interesting. Some of the advice you've gotten over the years, anything you can impart to our viewers uh, going forward? <laughs> I mean, the, I think the biggest thing I have to remind myself all the time is, you know, to, to kind of stop and, and listen to folks. You know, I'm in sales, I think, um, free speaker, so to speak, and uh, I have to remind myself a lot of times to stop and listen to what my customer is saying or to what someone I'm working with is saying because I think, um, you know, if I'm thinking about the next thing I'm going to say, uh, I may list, miss something very important in, in, in what the customer is saying or what the person you're working with is saying. So shut up and listen. I understand that. Yeah. Towner, thanks again for coming in and congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm here with Terry Lee Holland, and she is the, I'm going to read it because it's a long one. She is the division head of the data center, the cloud hosting services, the Naval Information Warfare Center Atlantic. That's a long title. Welcome, Terry Lee, and Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. So I read in your profile that you are a biology major. So how did a biology major get a job as a computer nerd? <laughs> Um, I think I fell into it. Uh -huh. um, so basically, um, came out of college, looked for some jobs, and kind of took the first one I could get when I was up in Maryland. Um, and it happened to be working for an insurance company, but managing their web profile. And then from there, my career just evolved into IT. And I haven't looked back towards biology, really. That's, that's interesting. So, so um, you know, you've done so many different things. What, what's the best advice you've ever been given? Oh. That's a tough one, um, but I think the, the best advice I've been given is to really just be yourself. Um, I think we try to fit into the molds that we see um, advertised to us, mm -hmm. but if we're just ourselves, if we are just honest, and we just try to do the best job that we can be, I think that's the best way to be successful. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, with so many things like reading your profile is just amazing and humbling. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so what's next for Terry Lee? What, you know, what, what, what's the next goal? My next goal is to really um, have a focus on cybersecurity. Hmm. I think real, that's, um, that's where our country needs um, us the most going into the next couple of years. Um, there's a lack of cybersecurity leadership, and I really want to be on the forefront of that. Interesting. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our 40 under 40 winner, Terry Lee Holland, congratulations. Thank you. Our next honoree, Ray Jean Lewis, is the executive director at Low Country Youth Services. Thanks for coming in. Congratulations. Thank you for having me. So, tell me about some of the community service that you do. Obviously, working with kids and youth, there's a lot going on, I'm sure. Anything that stands out more than another over the years? Uh, yeah, so uh, Low Country Youth Services, um, we have an umbrella which we house two organizations. One is the Distinguished Gentlemen's Club, which is our flagship organization, and the other is our Young Men Rise program. So the Distinguished Gentlemen's Club program has been in place since 2010. We function in small group mentoring, so that means we don't focus just on the one-to-one -one aspect as opposed to giving them a large group of men to choose from for the age group. Um, we have elementary, middle, and high school, and each of those groups has their own set of mentors that they can choose from. From. Um, we think of it more of a buffet-style mentoring aspect. Uh, one of the things about that, um, that organization, Distinguished Gentlemen's Club, is that we have a uh, community service aspect, which our young men have to get 18 hours of community service in addition to that mentorship time because we believe in the, the importance of giving back to the community. And any one of those folks that you've had over the years come back and tell you, I'm doing this because of what you folks did? Or yeah. Any of those... those things that make you keep coming back every day. Yeah, so um, one thing that we do that, that they say makes them come back every year is that we do a, a out-of-town trip every year. Um, every summer we do a summer retreat for our members who've been really committed. They have to earn the right to go on this trip. So we take between 40 and 50 kids on a, a trip out of town every year. Um, so four years ago we did Charlotte. Every time we go out of town we always take them on a college tour. So we did uh, Charlotte and Carowinds. Then we did Myrtle Beach, uh, Myrtle Beach and uh, Coastal Carolina. 
Then we did Atlanta. In Atlanta, we were not able to get a college tour because we weren't able to work one out. And then the next year is one, it's actually going to be in Washington, D.C., where we'll be, we'll be touring Howard University. Excellent. So, um, so those are the things that they say make them keep coming back. But what I see um, is the young people that have come back and told us about our impact, they've always spoken to the fact that they've known that they've had someone who's been consistent in their life and someone who they knew, no matter what, would be there for them. So that's, that's really been the parts. We've, we've been in place since 2010. So we've had kids, guys go become, leave the organization, become fathers, husbands. Uh, we have police officers. We have military members. We have business owners who all came through our organization. So we take great pride in those young that's people. That's great. Thanks for coming in, Ray John Lewis. Congratulations again. Thank you. I'm here with Melissa Spence, an attorney with Next Improve. Welcome and congratulations, Melissa. Well, thank you. <laughs> so, so what made you decide to become an attorney? Oh gosh. Well, being an attorney was something that I always wanted to do from a young age. Um, I was very involved in theater growing up, and I had a great mentor who said, "Use that as a stepping stone to another career." And I always enjoyed arguing <laughs> and debate. Um, and I became a government and English major in college. So everything just paired well and led me to the career I'm in, which has been great, and it's a great way to help others. <laughs> so so where'd you grow up? I grew up in the upstate, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Ah, yeah. so how was, how, tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, it doesn't compare to Charleston <laughs> by any means. Um, the old saying is, once you leave Spartanburg, you never go back. But Spartanburg has come a long way since when I was there. Obviously, I stayed and went to Wofford College um, and lived on campus. Uh, but Spartanburg has just grown so much in the past probably 15 years at this point, and I'm always excited to go back, especially to see family and friends. Yeah, and so you were a board member of the Florence Crittenden uh, uh, program. T tell us a little bit about that. Okay, tell so what they do. Yeah, so Florence Crittenden um, has a house downtown on St. Margaret Street, and they provide services to young, at risk, and pregnant women, um, all under the age of 21. And what you do at Florence, or what Florence Crittenden provides to them is education, housing, medical care, in order to break the cycle of specifically repeat teen pregnancies. Um, so I served as a board member for six years, which is a full term that you can serve. And during that time, I was able to implement a lot of changes in the house. For example, um, I was part of the group that um, was able to get the approval to allow the women to bring home the infants after they delivered because at that point with the DSS licensing and DHEC licensing, um, there were specific things you couldn't do in that house, specifically having infants in the house. Mm -hmm. So that was a great um, step for all of us. And obviously it's a crucial time for a mother to be with her infant after delivery. So it's been a wonderful experience and I miss it too. I just rolled off the board a few months ago. Yeah. <laughs> so our 2020 40 under 40 winner, Melissa Spence. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Congrats, Melissa, for making the top 40 under 40 in Charleston. What a great honor. You deserve it. Congratulations, Melissa. Congratulations, Melissa. We're so excited for you. What a wonderful recognition for all your efforts. Congratulations. Love you. I'm here with Mike Retaliata. He's the construction superintendent from Sea Island Habitat for Humanity. Uh, he couldn't come into the studio, so he's remoting in uh, over the magic of the internet. Welcome, Mike, and congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, so reading your your profile, uh, you know, you said you didn't you didn't intend to end up where you are when you were a kid growing up. Uh, what, did, what did you want to be when you grew up? It, it just made me curious. What, what, what were you thinking you were going to do? Sure. Uh, so I had aspirations to, um, to join the military uh, mm -hmm. for a period of time in high school, earlier in college. Um, I received an ROTC scholarship actually to attend um, college and then enter the service, the Army, for eight years of active duty. Uh, then I, I kind of figured out that wasn't for me. I studied U.S. history after that. And through a series of events, I, I landed in um, some volunteer work with Habitat and just absolutely loved it and grew to really believe in it. And uh, what about 
14 years later, here I am. Yeah, so. they, ca they captured you. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so what's the best advice you've ever been given, you know, coming along in, in life? Uh, so I think it's, um, uh, I, I've had quite a bit of good advice along the way. Um, but the, something that's always followed me is to uh, make sure you experience things that are um, a bit outside of your comfort zone. Uh, it's a way to learn uh, new things. Um, it can create different options, you know, open up a new path. Um, and I always wanted to, to kind of keep that in mind here as I traveled, as I um, entered different things, you know, college, the workforce, and um, even marriage. And uh, it, it's it's been um, it's, it's been really nice, I think, for uh, and helpful for me to grow into a, a better person in general. So just to and kind of experience things outside of the comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. And, and t tell us why volunteering is important. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I could go on for quite a bit. Um, it's, it's important for me. Uh, it, it brings me happiness. It brings me joy, a purpose, um, something real, I, I think, every day. Um, uh, on a broader scale, I think it brings people together. Um, it it kind of... Uh, reminds us or, or teaches us that this is bigger than, than just, you know, us as a single person here uh, in the world and that we're kind of here for each other, you know, and it doesn't matter. It can be habitat. It can be a food shelter, working with animals. It, it's just, you know, it, it reminds us that the, the bigger picture that, you know, it's more than just our simple singular lives. And yeah, um, that's been important to me. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike Retaliata. He's the construction superintendent for Sea Island Habitat for Humanity. Congratulations, Mike. I have, I have, you. your, I have, your, I have your award here. Hopefully, you can find a hammer to hang it with. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up in the... 2020 40 under 40 winners is Rebecca Phillips, financial center manager at South Carolina Federal Credit Union. Rebecca, thanks for coming in and congratulations. Absolutely, thank you. So your master's degree is in? History. What's it really in? <laughs> it's in American military studies. Okay, why? Well, my father was a Marine. Uh, okay. My stepfather was a Marine. My uncle was a Marine. My ex-husband was a Marine. So. The Marine Corps has really influenced my life and my success and my values. So I've always felt that knowing where we came from is important. Very good. And um, why did you decide to go to the Columbia College? It, well, I mean, I knew a lot of other people that had gone to Columbia College, but being a mom of two young boys and a full-time you know, professional, it was important to have something flexible that I could still pursue my passion. And how do you juggle all that? kids, masters, job. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. So there was definitely a will. It's something that I've always wanted to do. I hope one day to have a PhD. So you make it happen if that's what you want. Right. And how did you end up in Charleston? Um, my ex-husband was a Marine, like I said, okay. and that brought us here, but I fell in love with it. So I actually moved the rest of my whole family down here. My mom and my stepdad are down here to help with kiddos and to watch the, the grandkids grow up. Oh, very good. And when you're not doing all of those things, what do you like to do on the outside of work and all that? Personally, I like to read. I mean, that's where I get my escape, and I still love to learn and always challenge myself, but I've really given myself in service. I'm very active with um, the Berkeley Habitat for Humanity, so I give them a lot of my extra time to make sure that that mission succeeds, too. Very good. Well, thanks. Again, thanks to Rebecca Phillips for coming in. I'm here with Scott Peavy, commercial real estate broker, NAI Charleston, 2020 40 under 40 winner. Welcome and congratulations, Scott. Thank you. Good to be here. So uh, just to get kick us off a little bit, where'd you grow up? I grew up in uh, Springfield, Virginia, which oh. is in the northern, northern Virginia area, and uh, came to South Carolina via Clemson oh. and uh, to Charleston via my wife. So oh. here I am. Well, here I've been. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> congratulations. So... So uh, tell us a little bit about community service and stuff you've done, just reading your profile. 
Yeah, so uh, I'm very involved with the First Tee of Greater Charleston. Mm -hmm. First Tee is a, a nationwide network, uh, a, a charity group that focuses on teaching youth uh, really uh, character traits, uh, integrity, uh, sportsmanship, honesty, those kind of things. And they use the game of golf to instill those, uh, instill those traits in those kids, good he eating he habits, uh, healthy lifestyle choices, that kind of thing. Interesting. So, uh, so what did you know? You, you're with kids a lot. What, what what kind of what kind of advice are you giving out there on the golf course? Uh, you know, it, it kind of mirrors the game of golf for the golfers out there to say, hey, you, you can't control everything in life. Um, you know, you, you got to play it as it lies, so to speak. So, um, you know, what you have is the choice that you can make, um, and it really you know kind of follows that line of thinking uh, to to let them know, hey, a lot of these things are in your control. Huh. And uh, it's up to you to, to, to make the right choices and move forward. Interesting. So cast forward a little bit. What's, uh, what's, what's the next goal for, for Scott? What, 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 are you, what are you thinking? Uh, you, you know, that's a, that's a good question. I think um, expand the mission there a little bit. I've got three young kids, nine, six, and two. So oh, you're busy. That's a, that's a challenge in itself. And trying to make them into good people, I guess, is, is you know, the ultimate goal as a parent. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, join me in congratulating Scott Peavy, 40 under 40 winner for 2020. Thank you. Our next honoree, Gabby Poole, founding physician assistant program director at Charleston Southern University. Congratulations, Gabby. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. So how does one decide to start a physician's assistant program at a school that doesn't have a program? Yeah, it was really, um, it just kind of actually happened organically. I had a good friend who was friends with the president of the college at Charleston Southern University who was talking to him about starting the program. He connected us, and the next thing I know, I'm being offered this position to start this program, and it's really just been such a gift and such a blessing for me um, because it's allowed me to use a lot of the gifts that I enjoy using, like planning and organizing and leading um, every day in my job, which has been awesome. And then once you start the program, is it hard to get students to sign up to be a part of it? No, not, really? no, not for um, our profession. We're tremendously blessed with applicants. So we have, like for this cycle that we're in right now, we have over 1,500 applicants vying for 34 seats in the program. So they're, the applicants are plentiful um, because the career is really good. Right. And did you go to CSU? Is that how you no, ended up there? No, I did not. Um, I went to Walker College for undergraduate and then the Medical University of South Carolina for PA school. Very good. And when you're not doing all of that, uh, tell me about your family and motoring kids all over the place and things like that. Yeah, so I'm married. Um, my husband's also a PA, Anthony, and then we have three kids. Um, our daughter just turned six. She'll be going into first grade. We have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, both boys. Oh. And so, yes, it is very busy at our house. <laughs> That's great. I want to thank Gabby for coming in, 2020 40 Under 40 winner. Thanks again. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm here with Kenny Lyons. He's the Vice President of Operations of the Neighborhood Dining Group, another 40 Under 40 winner for 2020. Welcome, Kenny, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. So how did a, so how did a finance major get into the food and bev business? Uh, I started actually in, right after graduating high school, I started in valet um, parking, and, and that kind of got me into parties and hospitality and restaurant um, kind of world. And then from there, uh, freshman year of college, um, looking for a job. My sister's five years older than me. She was baking at the time, and so I actually started working in the front of house um, or serving the guests. Is, is front of house is the term we use in the restaurant uh, right, industry yeah. for front of house, back of house. So um, that was kind of the entry. Interesting. So Never stopped. So I, I read in your profile you grew up in Nashville. Tell us, tell us about Nashville. Tell us how... how uh, Nashville is a fantastic city. Um, grew up there, born in 85, and um, parents had moved up from the Mississippi Gulf Coast where my dad had grown up in uh, 82, 83. 
Um, and uh, people ask me this question all the time, actually, to compare Nashville and Charleston. That's and, why I asked it. Yeah, and um, I don't, I don't really know that there's a great uh, comparison outside of them both being great cities. Um, you know, they're vastly different in terms of uh, landscape, um, in terms of hills versus being completely flat in the low country. Um, the music scene in Nashville is something that I think definitely has Charleston beat. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, for me, uh, I'm a big uh, golfer and do a lot of work with the first tee as well. And, and Charleston area definitely has Nashville beat in that regard. So yeah. both are uh, happening um, uh, food scenes. Charleston has uh, a little bit more ingrained culture in the hospitality and food business. Nashville is kind of on the rise. Um, but we still have a restaurant there, and my family's still there, so I get to go up there quite often and visit. That's good. good. And, yeah. and so tell us a little bit about uh, community involvement. What, 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 what work are you doing around the community? Um, specifically in Charleston, uh, I've been involved with the first tee. Bucky Dudley is the executive director there. Um, and uh, as far as what I did last year, a number of um, commitments with young kids on the golf courses, teaching them skills, and, and kind of the whole premise of the first tee is, is teaching life skills through the game of golf. So there's some core values that the, the uh, first tee preaches. Um, and uh, it's just a really good program because it's something that it, it's not like this formal feel of, of having to do things and, and kind of preach at kids and tell them something on a blackboard or something like mm -hmm. that. You're actually outside doing something, something that they enjoy, something that you enjoy, and it's really a good bonding experience. Um, before that, I've done a lot of work uh, previously in Nashville with uh, Big Brother Big Sisters, but for the most part here, we do a ton of work with the Neighborhood Dining Group with the, the Tri-County Ministries and um, Mickey Baxt and, yeah. and yeah. that group um, with Feed the Need and, and um, amongst other things. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Lyons, 40 under 40 for 2020 winner. Congratulations, Kenny. Thank you, sir. I'm here with Krista Godet, the executive director of Justice Works Behavioral Care, our 2020 40 under 40 winner. Welcome and congratulations, Krista. Thank you so much. So tell us a little bit about uh, Justice Works Behavioral, Behavioral Care. What, what, what do you guys do? So Justice Works Behavioral Care is a statewide behavioral and mental health agency. So we serve children and families um, in their homes and in the communities. We also have an outpatient therapy center in North Charleston. And um, what we like to do is try to work with the family system to make sure that children with behavioral or mental health challenges um, are able to remain in the home, and we provide support that, that helps the whole family succeed. And so, so how did you get into this, this work? What, 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 you got, what got you here? Uh, I started as a teacher, and I realized I wanted to really be able to address um, more of the family system, um, help the children at sort of a different level. So I, I got my degree in social work, started at a, at a residential treatment facility, and realized I'd really like to be able to help um, children stay in the home versus having them go to a hospital or residential setting. So that's how I got started, and um, Justice Works really meets that mission for me. So. Really interesting. So you also chair the Lonan Foundation. Tell, tell us about that. Okay, so the Lonan Foundation is um, a, a nonprofit in which we help uh, children who have parents or caregivers that have a cancer diagnosis. And so we really just help them, not with really therapy or anything like that, but to help them gather a community together of other kiddos who are going through the same thing. We um, teach them some coping skills. We help them communicate their feelings and um, you know, kind of just help feel better and not feel so alone about what they're going through with their families. So congratulations. Thank you. I'm Krista Godek, <laughs> 40 under 40 winner for 2020. We'd like to thank all of our honorees for making a difference in Charleston, the community we love so much. It takes many people volunteering their time and talents to build a rich community. The community service and volunteer work represented is truly inspiring, as is the advice many of the winners have for the next generation, which is never underestimate your value. On behalf of Mark and myself and the entire staff of the Charleston Regional Business Journal, 
I'd like to thank each of you for being part of Business Journal's 23rd 40 Under 40 celebration.